This is our Thursday afternoon Bible study. And as we get ready to approach what we call Passover, uh, we're not going to do the Passover sermon today. We'll wait till Thursday, I mean Sunday morning. Because Passover is the highest Sabbath that there is. But what we want to go back to is part two of Will a Man Rob God? And we actually want to really look at that in depth because we want to talk about the subject of the thief and the robber. The reason why that is so important is because God's word to God's people prepare God's, God's people uh, for things that God is going to do because God does nothing except he warn his servants. And we are stewards over the mysteries of God. When, when we, when we uh, allow ourselves to be unprepared in a world that God created for man to inhabit, when we allow ourselves to be unprepared in what God is doing, we are robbing God of the chance to have a people, not only a people prepared to warn the rest of the sheep, called the priest, or, or, or the prophets, and the prophets of the Bible. The priests of the Bible, like Paul, uh, uh, the apostles of the Bible, like Matthew, uh, they, they, they're doing their job to warn us of, of things. That is coming upon the earth. See, see, man actually preaches like that God is never going to bring the day of the Lord. Man acts like that things that come on the earth, God has nothing to do with. Man acts like God is not moving in time to bring time to an end so that the highest quality of life, which is everlasting or eternal life, we have his day. Man acts like that we're stuck in time. And that everything that comes through time is just something that just falls out of the sky. And, and it just wants to happen. But according to the Bible, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And according to the Bible, God is sitting on the throne and nothing happens in the earth realm unless he knows. And he permits. What's happening in our season, in our time of 2020, is that we are unprepared for the pestilence, which means contagious diseases. We are unprepared for the false prophets and the false teaching and all the deception and the, and the landslide of filth and all the uh, killing that's going on in the earth. We're unprepared because we're not preaching God's plan in its entirety. So, 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 when the question comes up, will we rob God? We have robbed God of so much that church actually does not look like the church that Jesus Christ set up. So let's pray and take off. Spirit of the living God, in the strong name of Jesus, we first and foremost, we thank you, Lord, for who you are and all that you are to the earth realm. Father, we know that you sit on the throne. We know that you are the... Alpha and the Omega. We know that you are the beginning and the end. We know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We know you are the creator of our life. Father, we as man have lost our identity, male and female. Father, we're here, Father, trying to restore, trying to tell someone that, Father, we're living in the last and evil days. And we're trying to prepare the people according to thy word and thy word be true. You say you hold it higher than you hold your name. We're trying to prepare people to get ready because we're facing days of sorrows. We're facing times such as man has never seen. And we're also facing a landslide of deception, not just on the streets, not just in the house, not just in the job, but we are facing a landslide of deception coming from what you deem to only have the truth come from, and that's the pulpit. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, let us endure on your truth, because your word is true. Take us deep in your storehouse, Lord. Open up hearts, open souls, open minds. Heal, touch, bless as only you can. Father, we realize Corona is in the earth ring. But Corona is no match for you, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. All this sounds good. But if man does not apply faith to your promises. Your promises are no good. 
So, Father, I'm asking, Lord, in the name of Jesus, because you said pray to the Lord of the harvest, that he send laborers into the harvest. I'm praying, Lord, that not only that the laborers and the servants and the watchmen are prepared, but that lost one that don't know you in the partner of their sin, that lost one that don't know you, bring them in, Lord, before it's too late. Father, we realize time is winding up, but you're going to have the last say so. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, touch now as only you can because you're in control. In the name of your son, Jesus, we decree and declare amen and amen. Amen. The question was asked in Malachi. Malachi is, is a minor prophet. Malachi is a minor prophet of God. And, and, and his name means my messenger. Malachi, your name means my messenger. Now, the, the question was asked, and, and most pastors on Sunday tie, will you rob God into just money? But we want to go back to Malachi 1, and we want to come up to Malachi 3. And we want to tell you a summary of what had happened in Malachi. Malachi was supposed to be warning the people because the priests and the Israelites were supposed to be in covenant agreement with God. They were supposed to be giving God sacrifices according to what God said. So when you go back in Malachi, you have, you have Malachi saying, the burden of the word of the Lord, Malachi 1.1, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, said the Lord. Ye, ye say, wherein has ye loved us? Oh, you didn't know. They're acting like they don't know wherein God has loved them. We're going to skip down to Malachi 1, 6. A son honored his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? said the Lord of hosts unto you. O priest that despise my name. O priest, the priest that worked for the Lord is despising the Lord's name. O priest that despise my name. And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? O the priest acting like they don't, they don't know they have despised the Lord's name. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? And that ye say the table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, said the Lord of hosts? And now I pray thee beseech thee, God, that he will be gracious unto us. This has been by your means. Will I regard your person, said the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you that will shut the doors for now? Neither do no ye kindle fire on mine altar for now. I have neither will I accept an offering. I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hands. They are robbing God. Because they're not giving God covenant and they're not being obedient to the covenant of what Israel and the priests are supposed to be doing towards God. So the question would be by Malachi 3 8, will a man rob God? They're constantly robbing God. Matter of fact, they didn't just do it in Malachi. When you go back to Genesis 1 26 and 27, when he said, Let us make man, he defined what man would be. Man would be male and female with honor enough to God to be the image and likeness of God. We have robbed God through disobedience to not fulfill the likeness of God or the image of God. We no longer care what a man is anymore. Just since we describe a man as one that's having an American dream, we don't care whether man identity, whether man definition is tied into the creator God and why he created man. We stole the right for man to be what God said it would be when we begin to make gods out of ourselves. And, and the question would be, will we rob God? Yes, we have. We have robbed him throughout the Bible. Let me give you
Here, for instance, Sunday would be what we call Passover. Tomorrow is what you call Good Friday. This is the highest Sabbath of the year that we celebrate. We have taken Passover and quit celebrating Passover. And we started celebrating something called Easter. Easter is rolling the Easter eggs and has to do with a God called a fertility God. And they roll, they go in the grove and they have orgies and they roll eggs towards this fertility God. We went so far as to take the worship and we rob God of the worship because we go into a building and we worship the building. We got to have $3.5 million buildings. We're rolling the Easter egg on high Sabbath. We're no longer celebrating Passover in, in celebration to God so loving the world that he sent his only begotten son that whomsoever believe in him shall not pass Parish would have everlasting life. We're no longer pass, uh, celebrating Passover because we're now celebrating Easter. Everybody, even on the TV, it's the Cadbury Bunny. So we're not celebrating what God gave us. We have robbed what God gave us through Jesus Christ and his resurrection and the blood of the cross to call it Easter. And you can't even find Easter in the Bible but once. So we go along with what the crowd is doing because it's right because the crowd is doing it. But we don't worry about what God said. That's number one. That's one message. Number two is we're not being prepared in 2020 for what God said is going to come like an onslaught. God said certain things, and I'm going to read you a couple of messages. God says... And Habakkuk 223, Habakkuk 223, which is a minor prophet, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. It says the vision for the vision is for is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it surely come, it will not tarry. Jesus himself warned about a great tribulation coming upon the earth, such as man has never seen. Matthew 24, 4, 8, 12, 14. Matthew 24, 4, 8, 12, 14. What we have done is we have dressed up God like he's a God that will not get angry and pass judgment and bring wrath. We have dressed up God to where it looks like God will never end time when God told us time was temporary and it was only put in the earth rim to bring man, male, and female through the womb of a woman for a certain amount of souls and for a certain time. And we act like we got all the time in the world we don't have to run the priest. We don't have to prepare for what God is doing. But let me show you something through one of the minor prophets. Let's go back to Hosea. And I want to show you our time in 2020. I want to show you exactly what we are looking like in our time. I want to show you just how far we are falling. Stick with me for a minute. I wish I'd have had two Bibles, and, but I don't, and we're going to go on to pass. Hosea. I want to go to Hosea 4. If you can beat me there, go ahead there. Hosea 4. Hosea 4. Look at, listen to this. Listen to Hosea 4. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. You know, like we are inhabiting the land in 2020. Because there is no truth, not according to God's word, not to the preparation. So now, when I finish reading this, go to Luke 17 and wait for me there. Listen to what he's saying. 
He said, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out with blood, touch blood. What's in the land now is a, 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 a landslide of moral filth. Before I go to Luke 17 and I'm 20, I'm coming, I want to read you another minor prophet. And you can write it down. But I want to show you something. It's like God did not write things in his plan for us. It's like we don't have to uh, understand what God says. Zechariah 14 says something about this day that, we, that is approaching called the day of the Lord, the second coming. Zechariah 14 says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thou shalt spoil, be divided in the midst of thee. It said, The day of the Lord cometh, behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Listen to what he says. He said, The day is coming. When you, when you look at Zechariah, it tells you that it shall come to pass. Zechariah 14, 16. It shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, to keep the feast of the tabernacle. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. The Lord... Zechariah 14, 7. The, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at, at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that light that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea, and summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and in that day shall there be one Lord and one one name and woman. This is the God that we're talking about. But when you read Zechariah, Zechariah will tell you that God himself is going to raise a king up of first countenance. And this king is going to be called the Antichrist. Everything that's going on now, the blood, the giant blood moon last night. I don't know if you saw it, the giant pink moon, pink moon. The, the pestilence on the land, the wars, the rumors of wars, the, 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 all the killing that's going on. Let's look at Zechariah 13. And we're going to go to 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. There's going to be a third left on the earth. What, what's going to happen to the third that's left on the earth? And I will bring the third part through a fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. Imagine Corona. No family, no pastor, no deacon, no trustee. When you got it laying in that hospital bed, it's you and God most of the time. Ain't nobody can help you you got that time isolated. You can say a refiner's fire because as it refines you, you ain't got no other God before you. The only one that you can talk to in your isolation is you and God. A lot of people are being converted through Corona that never knew God. But because they got so much idle time, they ain't got no family. They ain't got no pastor. What they got is God Almighty. It's like they're almost a prodigal son, but five times worse. They're not eating with the hogs. They're sick with a plague, a pestilence. And all they got is to look up and see God with that isolation of 14 days. And if they make it, you can guarantee they have talked to God. And if they don't make it, they still, I guarantee you, have talked to God. Why? Because they in that fire. Let me see who he said he was going to bring through the fire. He said, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people and they shall say, 
the Lord is my God. He said, he said, in that refiner's fire, he said, they're going to call on my name. Man has built a society along with Satan to rob God of even the identity of what man, male and female, is supposed to be. Man, male and female, before there was a Webster, before there was an American dream, the, before your bank account, before bb &T, before Wells Fargo or State Employees Credit Union, before your job, Caterpillar, before your job, President, Governor, Senator, there was God. And God who molded and shaped and formed man from the dust of the earth, breathed into his nostrils to become a living soul, created man to be a representative and a a a a a reach arm, a reaching arm from the Godhead, operating under the holiness of God. We robbed God of that before we ever even got finished with Genesis 3. Because there was a forbidden fruit in the garden they called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All even Adam had to do was obey God and stay in covenant. Because he told him, he said, the day that you eat of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, you surely will die. They robbed God. They, God had them in a place of safety, in a place of provision, in a place. And they robbed God from the point of God being able to walk with them in the cool of the day. God had them naming all the animals. The genius was coming from man. And they was meeting God in the cool of the day. And they robbed God. Of having a relationship. They rob God with having a relationship simply by disobedience. So here we are in 2020. We are robbing God of the chance for the priest or the preacher or the watchman or the apostle or the prophet or the evangelist or the pastor teacher to use the spiritual gifts to tell the people, the flock, the mysteries of God and warn the people to prepare for what God is doing because God's word is irreversible. So when we go to understand in Luke 17 is where I said I was going when we look at 26. Here's what he said, Luke 17, 26. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man, the day of the Lord. In the days approaching, they did eat, they drank, they married. Wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, this is one of the only places where God is describing what it's going to look like in 2020. And he's using Noah's time and he's using Lot's time to describe to us what we should be looking at. And when we see the days of Noah, when we see the days of Lot, we should be preparing because He's not at the door. But there's certain things must happen, and we're not even prepared, and we're seeing Noah's time. Man is plumb wicked. They're not only wicked in the street, they're not only wicked in the store, in the, in the, in the nightclub, they're not only wicked on the job, they're wicked in the church. It takes the love of God to operate the many member body of Christ. We don't even worry about the priest, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. We don't worry about whether our deacon is loving or not before we put him in that position. We rob God of the right to have a deacon according to the Bible. We rob God of letting Jesus build a church so the gates of hell will not prevail. We rob God so we are a thief, John 10. We are a thief and a robber because we're taking every other kind of way to get to the sheepfold except through Jesus. We're going to talk about that thief and that robber. We're talking about that thief and that robber because they get up in the church and they make merchandise of you by bringing your money while they preach to you lies and not preaching to you what God said. It's, they're not preaching to you what God said he is doing in 2020. Look at this. Luke 17. And we're going to look. At 28, likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day 
that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained down fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them out. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. God says, likewise, Lot days. What was Lot days? Why did fire and brimstone rain down on Sodom and Gomorrah? What was going on in Lot's day? Homosexuality. Have you seen Noah's day? Have you, are you prepared or are you eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Christ comes back? Are you understanding that we are in a time where Satan has transformed preachers and put them in the pulpit of God's house where God's preachers are supposed to be standing, have transformed deacons and trustees? have made a kingdom of cults out of denominations and people are worshiping the title and the label of denominations and are worshiping the building. They have taken in their building $3.5 million buildings, $20 million buildings, and they'll take the building when, when God actually used Jesus to build people to present their body a living sacrifice and holy and acceptable to the Lord. And when Jesus told the disciples not one building was going to be left upon another building and you go in there and pay your tithe towards God and they take your tithe and pay the salary of the one to tell you to lie and God tell you God said build another building and they build these great big buildings and on top of the building is a steeple that looks like the man's organism and the doors in the buildings and the windows in the building look like the female organism so they actually saying through the building that you're worshiping in they are building the building in a symbol of a fertility God and then when it comes down to Passover on the highest Sabbath of the day, you instead of you calling it Passover, you got a bunch of Easter eggs and you roll into the fertility God and you got it all in God's house and God said, my name is Jealous and you are not worried about what God, yeah, we robbing God. We robbing him. And I don't care whether man agree with me or not, I'm in the Bible. We are building buildings that look like a fertility God is being worshipped in there. We got the steeple sitting on top of the building. And we got the doors shaped like a female. Oh, you never heard this. When, when Jesus told the lady, said, you worship, you know not what of. Worship is in spirit and in truth. And it's in your heart. And if your heart is right, it don't matter whether you got a $3.5 billion building. I preached in Africa. I didn't have a building. All I had was the word of God. The Holy Spirit to lead and guide me. And God Almighty sitting rain over me. Didn't have a building. If God never used me again, he have used me to convert four or five hundred at the time. So pardon me if I'm not trying to be like the crowd. I'm trying to tell somebody to tell somebody we are robbing God and we are robbing him bad to where the church don't look like what Jesus Christ did. The pastors aren't preparing the sheep for the slaughter that's coming. Coronavirus slipped up on some people. But I have been preaching in the church that I preach at for over five months. There's something coming down the pike. And it's going to shake the church to its core. It's here. And there's another one coming. And there's another one coming. We are in the last days. And the pastors are preparing the sheep to fly out of here. But when you go to Revelation, please hear me. You don't shut your mind off. When you go to Revelation, it tells you Jesus is coming here for a thousand years. While Satan is bound, then it tells you God is coming and bringing heaven and he's going to do a new heaven and he's going to do a new earth and he's bringing it to earth to be amongst his people. There ain't going to be no more darkness. There ain't going to be no more sickness that God is going to set up heaven here. So exactly where are these people convincing you that Jesus is going to take you to if he comes before seven? Then he, that's a lie, because the Bible says he's not coming to 777. So we're robbing God of even being able to tell us what he's going to do, when he's going to do it. We are so constantly on deception. We are so constantly listening to a lie instead of letting God furnish us with the wisdom and the understanding of what he's going to do. We are so busy with itching ears that we don't believe anything.
That's the only thing that's going to be true. This is the only thing going to be true. And he says that his people are going to be persecuted for his namesake, for simply trying to preach the truth. The pastors will come up there and they'll tell you, oh, this is not yet. But you've already seen some of the blood moons. You've already seen the wars, the rumors of wars. You've already seen the giant moon last night. You've already seen unnatural disasters. You've seen all the killing going on. You've seen unnatural uh, earth weather. You've seen unnatural man becoming a woman and woman becoming a man. You've seen this evilness and this rush of lawlessness to where we had moral values. We had moral values. Let's talk about the United States. We had moral values. I'm not preaching for anybody to like me. We had moral values in the United States where the highest office in the land, they were not liars. The Republicans or the Democrats, they were not liars. They was one that would stand on moral values. They would have a wife. They understood. And then somewhere down the line when filth start rolling into the laws, and we started voting one way and the laws would start doing another way. We begin to still want to believe in man to where we took our eyes off of Jesus the Christ. When we took our eyes off of Jesus the Christ, we thought we still could head forward and still trust the Republican. We still could trust the Democrat. All the time they're in cahoots with money. That's what I said. Just like the church, they're in cahoots with money. Everybody is merchandising everybody and the only one that truly can be, tra be trusted is Jesus the Christ. He's the only one that died and paid for the right to build the church. Are we robbing God? Yes, we are. We're robbing God because the pastor that's been hired by the denomination that went to the denomination school will tell you what he thinks and what he gets from the scripture. Let's go to John 10.10. 10. Let's talk to John. See what John says. Let's want, we want to see who that thief and who that robber is. We want to see. The Bible says, man's heart will fail them for fear of watching what is happening upon the earth. It says, man's heart is going to fail them for what they're going to see happening upon the earth. Now, John 10, 10 says, I mean, John 10, 1 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door, which is Jesus Christ, unto the sheepfold, but climbing up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Who is the thief and the robber? The one that stands in the pulpit and don't preach to you what God's plan is telling you for 2020, and don't prepare you for the days of Noah, don't prepare you for the days of Lot, don't prepare you for the generation of the fig tree. Merchandise you while they build buildings that is not going to stand because the build, only building God is truly interested in. Please listen. Listen. If you're serious about God, listen, listen, listen. The only God really, the only building God really is interested in is your heart. God don't care how pretty your building is if your heart ain't right. I don't care if your building costs a hundred billion dollars. If the heart of the people is not right inside the building, the building is vanity. So now let me ask you this question. If you are not discerning spiritually whether or not the truth is in that $100 billion building you building, everlasting life, if everlasting life is not in there, if the doctrine of Jesus Christ is not in there, what good is it for you to build the building? If you're not presenting yourself to God as a servant, to be holy and acceptable, a living sacrifice, Romans 12. If you're not filling yourself with the presence of God, what good is the building in your money going to do? What can you buy from God? God said in Hosea, I don't want your burnt offering and your sacrifice. I want your love. And he went so far as to say in John, if, because if you love me, you will obey me. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. But we, we're not worried. We want to be a part of this natural realm 
to where if we got the biggest building, we got the flashiest pastor, and we go to church every Sunday, we don't even worry about whether or not we're fulfilling anything in our heart. We're not worried about whether or not the Holy Spirit exists in us. We're robbing God because we're not going through the necessary steps to be redeemed, sanctified, regenerated, restored man and woman. We're satisfied because we got a label, a building, and a pastor, and we part of a social group. We have robbed God and Jesus when Jesus said signs and wonders will follow those that are his. And we started going to the elaborate building. And instead of us laying hands and they shall recover, we draw back our hands and started sitting comfortably on the padded pew. Started paying tithe and offering and seed money and bringing all our money through the building. And thinking we did something because we paid the money. And ain't gave God no pleasure. You ain't laid hands on nobody. You ain't prayed over nobody. You ain't loved nobody. You still walling your eyes in the church. At the same people you were walling your eyes at 15 years ago when they first start coming in there. Then the old members get mad with the new members and start talking about they going to try to take over our church. So there's envy, strife, and jealousy in that $5 billion building with all the steeples on it and the doors made like the woman. And you are sitting in there talking about we worshiping God. You're entertaining. You are robbing God because you're not worshiping. You're not praising God because you're not even on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. You are under the thief and the robber. Who is that thief and robber? Let me show you who the thief and the robber is. Let me show you who the thief and the robber is. When I get there, I tell you because I, I want to make sure that I give you the right spot. Let's go to Second Corinthians. Let's go to Second Corinthians four four. This is too important to let go. I need for you to see this. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4. Let's start at 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. We're going to start at 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commencing ourselves to every man conscious in the sight of God. For if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and he commanded it to shine out of me. If the light is not shining out of me, if the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding is not shining out of me, my building where I'm preaching in can look as elaborate as it won't do. If the light of the wisdom or the knowledge of God is not shining from the priest, from the pulpit on down, if the deacon is not a deacon of God Almighty, they are a deacon to the thief and the robber because there's only two sides. There's only two sides. So then he goes so far as to say, but we have, number six, four, six, for God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness and shine in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He said the light of the knowledge. He wants you to have the light of the knowledge of the truth. 
He wants you to have the light of the knowledge of the truth because Jesus, John 1, 7, John 1, 14, Jesus is the word. He is the way, the truth, and the light. You just cannot say Jesus and pin any kind of deception or any kind of the uh, 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 lie or any kind of falsehood on him. You can't take a, a, a deacon or you can't take an apostle. You can't take a prophet and say this is a prophet of the living God and you're not even on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. You can't even come to a group of people and tell them that God supplied you if you are not on truth. Oh, you want me to prove that? I will. Go with me in 2 John. Go with me in 2 John. Now, you're in the church. You've got a label. You're building the building. And you got these labels of the kingdom of the cult. And you've got every kind of doctrine in there. And they'll tell you to bring all your money through to him. And God is not even interested in money if he can't get your heart. Because what God is actually trying to do is will that all man's soul, the soul, the soul, is be saved. He don't care nothing about your outer vessel. He don't care if you got on a three-piece suit from Leon clothing. What he wants you to have on is a three-piece spiritual Holy Ghost suit in your heart. Second John 9. Who said Second John 9? Who said ever transcribed it? transgressive and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. Let me let me read it one more time real slow. Whosoever transgress and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Listen, listen what Tian says. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not unto your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. We ain't only giving a, 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 a wishing them God speed, we giving them our, the, the fruit of our labor. They not they're not teaching the doctrine of Jesus Christ. See, because what I'm teaching you and what I'm preaching to you is simply this. Let me slow it down because I need for you to get this. I'm teaching you the doctrine of Jesus Christ about his sacred covenant. I'm teaching to you and preparing you for what we're seeing now in 2020 with Corona, with all this un unnatural weather, with all these blood moons, with all these wars and rumors of wars. With all this coming together and this lying and people wanting to believe in the president and people wanting to believe in the Democrats and people wanting to believe in the Republican instead of believing in the God that made you and, and staying focused and holding your hand in his hand because he's the only one that's going to see you through. Paul said you need to run and press towards the mark of the high calling. Paul said, John said, if you endure and continue to endure, he said, if you abide, we've got to abide, we've got to focus, we've got to gird up the lungs of our mind, we've got to understand even though we're seeing corona, corona does not come nigh us, but God, because God prepared us for corona. God told us pestilence were coming. We are prepared for what God said he was going to do. It's not strange to us. To what the world is doing, those who are prepared. But those who are not prepared, they're sitting up saying, where they're going to be a major revival. Ding, ding, ding. You better go to Second Thessalonians. You better read Paul's writings. You better read Peter's writings. Because the next revival is going to be a revival of deception. And it's going to hit the bell toll at six trump. The sixth seal and the sixth vow, and he's going to be man coming up through the political system doing lying signs and wonders. And what we are seeing now is the stage and the preparation of 666 coming. That's the thief and the robber. And what he's doing right now is he's preparing his churches to prepare for the Antichrist. So what's happening in the churches is they're not actually preparing you to wait and work in the field till 777. They're actually telling you to prepare for 666. Get on board with what's going on at 666. If you're not prepared for what's
what's going on at 666 in Revelation 13, read what he said. If you're not prepared and you have not studied to show yourself approved, to rightly divide the word of truth, if you're not prepared for 666, when that man come down and fire fall from heaven, bam! And you look up and you ain't never seen a miracle in your church, but you giving money? You going to flock over there where he is. And everywhere he shows up at, at a building, you going to make sure you be there. Because he said in his word, he said if he don't step in and cut the time short from this guy at 666, he said his very elect is going to be deceived. Man is telling you they're going to be a major revival after Corona. Honey, I'm telling you they're going to be major persecution after Corona. Because he said in Zechariah, he said in Matthew 24, he said in Mount 13, he said in Luke 21, he said, listen, you better live every day as if it's your last because we are in the days of sorrows. Ephesians 12 said we are in the evil day. Put on all your armor. So we act like man, act just like God did not tell us or prepare us for what we are looking at. We're sitting up like we're zombies and we're just listening to everything man is teaching, but we're not listening to God and Jesus through the Holy Spirit. We're not listening to God to prepare us for times such as what we're looking at. And then when somebody like me come along to try to tell you the truth, there's so many people going with the wrong crowd, they'll make you think I'm wrong and I'm reading from the Bible. They'll make you think I'm wrong. But not only did the New Testament tell what was going to happen before Jesus came, the Old Testament told it too. Let me prove this. Let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel. We want to go to Daniel. We want to go to Daniel 11. We want to go to Daniel 12, I mean Daniel 11, and we want to start at, we want to start, we're going to start at 18, I'm going to start right there. After this shall he turn his face unto the isles, and shall take many, but a prince for his own behalf shall call the reproach offered by him to cease without his own reproach. He shall cause it to turn upon him. Then he shall turn his face toward the fort of his own land. But he shall stumble and fall and not be found. Then shall stand up in his estate a riser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within few days he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. In his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries and with the arms of a flood, flood of filth and lies, shall they be overthrown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the princes of the covenant. And after the league made with him, and after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. He said, in a, in, he said, in a peaceably, even upon the flatteries, places of the providence. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, the and spoils and riches. Yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. And he shall stir up his power, his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him. And his army shall overflow and many shall fall down slain and both these kings hearts shall be to do mischief and they shall speak lies at one table but it shall not prosper for yet the end shall be at the time appointed then shall he return to his land with great riches 
and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. His heart shall be against the holy covenant. This Antichrist, this is who he's talking about. This Antichrist, this Antichrist. Now, let's go to 2 Thessalonians and we're going to end it right there. Who's the thief and the robber? It's the apostles that Satan has masqueraded and had them set to transform to stand in God's holy place, worshiping God. And instead of us worshiping God, we're worshiping Satan by taking and raising money, giving it to Satan and his deception, and not making sure we are on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. The thief and the robber had Satan himself transformed. Now he's transforming apostles and prophets, pastors and teachers, deacons and trustees, labors and denominations, and he's not allowing Jesus to build the church. So we are robbing God of even the chance to have mankind restored and sanctified back to God by believing in Jesus Christ. Instead, we're believing in the label of the denomination. We're believing in what the pastor said. We're believing in what the president said. But man cannot control what we're seeing on the earth realm. Man can't control it. God is still in charge. I say God is still in charge. So we're going to 1 Thessalonians. God, God's word is true, and I don't care what man don't agree with it. God will back up his own word. All I got to do is preach and teach it and stand on it. Listen to what he said. Listen to what this man is going to do. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Talking about the day when Jesus is coming by. That day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Who oppose, oppose means to stand against, but exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitting in the temple of God. He wants to be worshipped. That's been the whole problem from the first earth age all the way through the second earth age. Satan wants to be worshipped. Where is the only place? That true worship has been going on from the beginning of time in the synagogue, in the tent of meeting, in the church house, in the body of Christ. So Satan decided, I want to exalt myself. I want to be worshipped. Where can I be worshipped at? Where can I get the most attention at? And where can I fool the most people? In God's church house. So he, so before he shows up as the Antichrist, he sets his apostles and his prophets in buildings to preach we're going to be raptured out of here when there ain't no such thing in the Bible. And so they get all wound up about being rapture ready. You study that and see if the Bible tells you that. So we rob God of perfect God, allowing God and Jesus through the Holy Spirit in the Word we rob God of a chance to prepare us for what really is going to come and what's going to happen. We get on board with the doctrine of Satan. Ain't that what he did? Do we not owe it to ourselves to know the truth for ourselves? It's salvation. If you have salvation, do you think that when you stand before God and you be able to tell God, well, my pastor, when he told you, that you had to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that salvation and you had to believe in Jesus yourself. How can you blame it on anybody else when you have the same Bible that your pastor has? And is it not your job to find out what salvation and have an understanding of what the doctrine of Jesus Christ is all about? Is it not your job to make sure that you don't rob God of you being the image and likeness of God but you make sure that you are fulfilling what God identified you to be. Whose responsibility is it for you to make sure your salvation, that God the Father through Jesus Christ and by the gifting of the Holy Spirit and by living by every word that proceeds out of his mouth, out of the mouth of God, whose job is it to make sure you got the truth about salvation? Is it yours? Are you to present your body? A sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord? Is each individual that claims to be God Almighty, is it your responsibility to know what the doctrine of Jesus Christ is? 
If God wakes you up every day, I'm sure he's giving you time to study to show yourself approved. I'm sure he's giving you time to study to show yourself approved that you may rightly divide the work. No, you know what you want to do in this microwave 2020 world? You want to run the American dream. You want to have the money. You want to hunt. You want to shoot pool. You want to play basketball. You want to gamble. You want to do all this. And then you want to leave your salvation to what your pastor say on Sunday morning. So you can get a microwave lunch. You ain't going to church till the last minute. You're going to sit on that padded pew till you can't take it. You're going to leave before benediction. And you're going to stand up and lie and tell somebody you're a Christian. Honey, Christianity ain't that cheap. Christianity is a service to the Lord, and you got to abide in it, you got to endure in it, and you got to be serious about it. You got to love the Lord thy God, the one that sent Jesus to that cross for what we get ready to celebrate called Passover. You got to love him with all your heart, you got to love him with all your mind, you got to love him with all your soul, and you got to love him with all your strength. I just talked about a relationship. If you, honey, if you leaving your relationship with God on your pastor, ain't nobody gonna take that because a relationship don't work through a third party. This is Pastor Sam. I said we'll see you pass over Sunday morning. 